I want us to transition to talking about division. A lot of you are kind of like mentally already there. Again, I want to make sure you understand what's going on. And I know some of you are like, I want to say, I know how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you right out. Here's a question. For those of you who've learned a process, which I know is not all of you, but for those of you who have learned a process, what would you write as you're working for the next step? Right at the back, what do you reckon? Um, two, over three, um, five over two. two over three, which is this first fraction. This, for some reason, turns from division into multiplication times, and then we turn this thing upside down. By the way, does anyone, we give it a special name, starts with an R when you turn a fraction upside down. Yeah, it's a... Reciprocal, right? So I learned this when, when I was your age. I learned this as keep, change, flip. Anyone learn it that way? I'm like a million years old, so no. That's okay. Keep this the same. You change this from division to multiplication, and then you flip this upside down. You take the reciprocal, okay? Now, indeed, this is the way that you work out the answer, and it will give you the right number at the end. But, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to tell me. I'm just really curious. Raise your hand if you knew that process already. Hands up straight. I expect it's a fair few of you. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up if, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do this. I just want to know. If you feel like you could come up the front of the room and tell everyone why you change this and then you flip this. Yeah. Who wants to keep their hand up? I'm just curious. Okay, that's awesome. Hands down. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you got there. For all of us, right? Like This is not to make you feel bad. Often we start knowing how to do something, you just like get taught steps to do something, and you get the right answers. You don't know why it is that those steps give you the right answers, so that's what I want to push into. I'm not going to write that as my next line of working. I'm going to do something else. Now you can pick up your pens. If you've already written two thirds divided by four fifths, I want to explain to you why it is that we change it into multiplication and we do the reciprocal thing. Okay? Here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to write this instead of as something divided by something else, I'm going to write it as one big gigantic fraction, like so. Now ordinarily, we hate this kind of thing, right? Ordinarily we look at that and we're like, gross, fractions on fractions, this looks like a mess. We usually try and get away from this, okay? But I'm going to take advantage of something we learned before with multiplying fractions to help you see why this is actually a helpful thing to do. You know when you um, looked at this answer here, right? Do you remember this? And you said 6 out of 20, that's the same as 3 divided by 10. Do you remember that? What you did was you divided the numerator by 2 and you divided the denominator by 2. Does that make sense? Like you can't just go dividing things. You have to do it equally. So far, so good. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this fraction up here. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, I'm going to multiply by a new fraction to try and make this less messy and gross. What number could I multiply the top and the bottom by to make this less messy and gross? Well, just focus on this denominator for a second, right? See how it's 4 over 5? You already know that the reciprocal is something important, right? What's the reciprocal of 4 over 5? Five? 5 over 4. Now, if I multiply the bottom by something, if I do something to the bottom, I've got to do the same thing to the top. Do you agree? So here's this multiplication. I'm going to do the same on the top, right? You can follow this along with me. If you have another color, it's often helpful. Now, have a look at this denominator right here. Four fifths times five fourths. You multiply across, what are you going to get? A whole number. A whole number. Not just any whole number the best whole number that you can have on the denominator, you're going to get one. one, or 20 over 20, which is one, okay? So let's go ahead and, wrong color, write this all out. Up on the top here, I'm just going to deal with this numerator in a minute, but on the denominator, I have one. And we know, you divide anything by one and you just get back the same number you started with, right? Five divided by one is five, right? So that's why I now get the numerator without this denominator, and that's the changing and the flipping you told me about before. But it didn't just come out of nowhere, it came from us using what we know of multiplication with fractions. Does that make sense? Uh, what is the answer, by the way? Come on, let's just go across. Let's do it like we did before. We can do it all together. Numerator should be? 
10, denominator should be 12, and of course that means we actually can simplify a little bit, we can go 5 over 6, fantastic, okay? Now just before I let you loose on the rest of the exercise, and I'm going to write down a few questions for you, it's important that I actually mention this is not the only way to divide fractions. You can do it in other ways. For instance, you know what we were saying about multiplying fractions? You just, uh, you just go do the top and then you do the bottom. You can do exactly the same thing with division. Um, maybe just write this underneath for me. Let's call this example 2. If you had something like 12 over 20 and then I told you to divide it by, say, uh, 3 quarters. You can do the keep change flip thing if you want. We've just shown that it works, but you don't even need to. Just like with multiplication, you do the top and the bottom. Divisions like multiplication, just kind of backwards. So what's 12 divided by 3? It's 4. And what's 20 divided by 4? Five. It's 5. And if you keep change flip, you'll get this too. It's just that this way is actually a bit simpler and faster. Uh, in maths, we often have lots of different ways to go, to go and get the same answer. Just like if you were going from here to Castle Towers, you could go via County Drive or you could go around via Hastings. You're like, the traffic there is terrible. I can see a better way to do this. Then I'm going to choose that method. Does that make sense? In maths, it's really important to learn more than one way to do things.